Okay, about 15 minutes late to the hourly wrap of the arena. I'm just going to hop in. I know people will be trickling in over the next uh, few minutes. Welcome back, Free Hoosier, Pack Fanny. Appreciate the resubs. Welcome back to Hey, It's Me, Eric. Also known as Hey, It's You, Eric. Okay, uh, I'll play E4. Starting with... um. I'm going to try to play a little bit more aggressively Happy first few games here. Months. Welcome back, Finny Chase. Okay, starting with a Scotch. Although I might end up playing a Scotch Gambit or Goring Gambit. I mean, the only... Really, the only acceptable move here is to take with a Pawn. Um, opponent takes with a Knight. And generally, this is considered a little bit dubious. Like, even though, okay, it's all a fair trade, um, white is now just dominating the center. And I can continue. Knight c3. It's kind of hard to remove the queen from d4. Okay, black wants to trade more. Yeah, it might be difficult to punish Black's play right away. Like, okay, I could take, take, and then maybe e5 is one approach. Like, very, uh, very forcing, because takes, takes, and then there's a weak pawn. I think I'll go for that. It does simplify things a bit, but I think it guarantees some long-term advantage. Because sometimes the lead in development, it's just short-term. And okay, we could trade queens. I'm debating how positional I want to have this game, but I think I, I'll allow the queen trade. It's actually an interesting dynamic because I'm playing against someone who's just very trade happy. I just wanting to trade off everything, keep things simple. And that's a style that uh, I'll occasionally run into. Um, and so far, I'm going with it. Now, if I castle, I allow rook d2, which I probably don't want. So I guess I can also be trade happy. Rook d1, fighting for the d file. If takes, I'm going to take with king, and then maybe later play king e2. Thank you, one clutch spork. Gifting two. Maybe king e2 right away, actually. Ensuring the rooks are connected. If knight g4... Oh, there's actually... There's almost a tactic. There's almost bishop f2, knight g4. But I would be able to take first. Mm, okay, let's trade on d8. I think f3 will be a safe move. Yeah, the main advantage here is actually the pawn structure. I'm really engaged with the notification. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks for engaging. Gaston LV. Also resubbing. Appreciate all the hype. Okay, this is the only open vial on the board. And King was a target. Now, if I take rook takes, there's a fork, but take pawn takes, probably not a great trade for me. Now there's g4, there's some a3 move. What to do? Maybe a3 first. Just restricting the bishop a little bit. Gonna try and make small and steady improvements here. There was a question uh, earlier, why king e2 and not castling? Um, yeah, generally when queens are off the board, the king is, first of all, is safer in the center, but it can also be more useful later in the end game. Because um, in the end game, you usually want to use your king as an active player. 
Hey, welcome back, Ember. Congratulations on beating a Terminator kitten with an aquatic Stafford. Oh yeah, Maybe the help of Stockfish. Stafford, Traxler, Vampire Chickens Wagon Gambit and mm. Bush Gas next. On Chesap would be Chef's Kiss. Quack Love. A lot of openings to choose from. Yeah, maybe after this tournament we'll get hey, some Eric, men's content. Since last year. Oh, welcome back, Starship. Okay, I gotta take a moment to, to figure out what to do here. Because um, trading rooks... Trading rooks makes it very difficult to attack e6. Now, if I move the rook, I can see the e-file, so... I think I have to make some concession. I'm calculating uh, takes, 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 and then this. Then bishop e7. Yeah, I think rookie one. It looks kind of passive. A little bit sad. Not the happy trades that uh, I've been used to this game, <laughs> but uh, I think the rook the rook will Good be night, useful in the long run. Good night, real pineapple. Oh, thank you, Wah right Also gifting too. Yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. This is the first game of the stream. Um, I late joined the tournament. I don't think I'm trying to win it. I guess I'm trying to break 2600 again. I've been hovering around this number for a while. An opponent taking their time. Thank you, Toaster. First time, Brian. Ooh. Okay, so Black is still trade happy. I'll take. Yeah, I don't mind trading the bishops. Even though the bishop looked strong on e5, um, it's still a very small edge for for white. The pawn offered a draw, so I think it's clear that black has been playing for a draw. And um, it's possible that maybe I missed some chances later to uh, maybe get a like better chances earlier on. But I'm trying to make this instructive. So now knight d5, opponent wants to trade more. I'm thinking, I was thinking rookie two, but then it's still knight d5. Thanks for all the content. Oh, thank you, despondent penguin. I'm also looking at this move, but then, yeah, knight d5 is coming in most cases. So I have an idea. I'm going to play king e2. It was a very prophylactic move. It At avoids a trade. Do you get the most viewers? You've changed your timings lately and it's coinciding with my workplace timings oh, from I'm sorry. Way. Let's go, Eric. <laughs> yeah, my stream schedule is a little bit sporadic. It can be hard to plan out streams exactly for different times, but uh, I usually just try and stream when I have like the most energy and when I'm available. I'm trying to balance a busy schedule. Um, generally, the best times to stream are like late morning, early afternoon, central time US. That's when I think most of the world is awake. Thank you, fine. I will join Twitch. I like the late night streams. Gifting quack, a sub. Quack, quack. 13 months of sub. Oh, welcome to, doesn't. welcome back to uh, Shwarma. Happy 13 months. Yeah, to fully explain this move, I'm allowing knight f4 even. And after king f2, like everything's covered. Because d2 would be covered, pawns defended. And gradually, I would like to expand. Also, maybe trying to win a pawn. Thank you, Messi, the prime sub. Mm. 
Mm. And this rook almost looks trappable. I think I'll start with g3, preventing knight f4. I've been a lot of prophylaxis so far. I was almost threatening uh, c3. Okay. I could still play c3, actually. I think I'll do it. Black has no time to trade the knights. Rook's attacked. Welcome back, Bul Bulkanovsky chess. Vin smoke for the first time, Prime. Walright gifting another sub. And it's hard to keep up with all the support. I do appreciate it. I think so, all the first timers. And the gifters, the resubbers. So black has a choice. I mean, the rook can go this way or this way. Or this way, but probably not. Or this way. Expecting some retreats. Rook c4 gets forked. Rook a4 would be living on the edge. So now it's a question if I want to trade knights. Um, the answer is probably not. Because I'd like to keep winning chances alive. Or at least as many winning chances as possible. So let me target the pawn. Time is close to level. Yeah, to answer the question about what hours viewership is like best, uh, YouTube will actually tell me like what time of day my audience is most active. And it's usually from, I think it's like 8 a.m. Central Time to maybe 3 or 4 p.m. And then it drops off around this time. But uh, I guess I hit different time zones. Shout out to everyone watching from Asia, Australia. Europeans, it's probably early morning for. So Black now has a choice what to do with this pawn. Because I'm pretty sure I am threatening to take it. Uh, and then move the king. I'll still, still move the king. Attacking the pawn twice. I mean, f4 looks attractive. Now, f4 does concede these squares, so it, it makes the knight a little bit more powerful. But f4 also opened up this square, and I mean, the idea is to control e5. Um, that's a really nice outpost square uh, in front of the isolated pawn. H3 will come. So very positional. And so far, it's been hard for Black to find a plan. And meanwhile, uh, a lot of the moves have been like clear improving moves for White. Now, I might want to transfer back to the D file. This, is, this Rook can't access D7. Now, knowing my opponent, we might see knight d7, like going for the trade. Uh, okay, let's start with rook d1. King f3. Now, if knight d7... If this were a classical game, I would take a long time to calculate the king pawn ending. Because uh, there's a chance... It's good, although at first glance, I don't think it works. I don't think it's winning for white. Although maybe like take, take, okay, so we trade everything king e4. There's an idea to play f5, take, take, and then get the king to g6. What looks more attractive is king e4 first, and then after takes, takes, rook d7, takes, takes, and then f5. 
take take king d6 or king e7 king e7 i move back and i should be winning not 100 percent sure though what i might do can you play the polish next time you have white mm -hmm. maybe i would consider it I'm realizing I can make progress on the king side first. Yeah, let's do this. My opponent has offered two Happy draws two so years, far. King. I live in STL. Any plans oh, nice. on community events this year? I'd love to get my chessboard signed by you. Yeah, hopefully at some point this year. I mean, the chess club is undergoing uh, renovations. And once they open, there's going to be... Hopefully a lot more action happening. Um, it would be cool to do some kind of uh, like community meetup somewhere in St. Louis. I've been running into like a lot of uh, a lot of chess fans in St. Louis in the last few months. I think the like the major events are coming back maybe March or April. Not sure if American Cup has been announced yet. Yeah, sadly, I I don't think I'm making much headway with a knight. It still looks good, though. If e5, I play f5. Hey, it's Sabina. Thanks, Sabina. Appreciate the raid. Welcome to the Raiders. If you're just joining, I think I just blunder. Just blunder? I just allowed g5. I'm in trouble. Uh oh. Uh, I'm actually in trouble here. Because e5 is coming. I guess I'll play king e4. And then get the knight back. I couldn't take the pawn because pawn e5. And I'm down on time. Wow. Uh... <laughs> I think I overpushed a little bit. I think it should still be okay. Like, I have to be really careful though. I'll start with this. Hey Eric, I've just moved to St. Louis from the. Oh UK. no way! I have an SDL club membership. Can I just turn up and play? Um, I think so. Usually, when you get your membership, they'll explain like what you get access to, but generally, there's free play hours. Um, but I'm not sure what their schedule is, like, especially with New Year and, again, with the renovations. But most weeks are open. Okay, let's take... Okay, so I won back the pawn. I think this is okay now. I mean, things have simplified a ton, though. Rook A6 may be coming, Rook A2. Okay, I want to push the outside passer. I'm freeing the square for the knight and allowing the king to come in. Also threatening this. A very multi-purpose move. Knight e3. Yeah, let's go after the pawn. And this should be better for <clears throat> better for white. Maybe even like very close to winning. Um, but it still takes work. It's still not easy. <laughs> okay, I should win the pawn. I think I'm safe taking this. Oh. Okay, not of two was a possibility at some point. Three draw offers for my opponent. Wow. There we go. Time scramble time. 
This is hard to resolve. Smile. Thanks for the sub. Maybe I could have taken. I'm still down on time. But I now have two past pawns. I move a little bit quicker here. If I play a6, uh, neither piece can take, really. Okay, we'll get one of these. Oh no, my... Okay. Okay. There was a point where there was a fork, but would not have mattered. Okay, not the cleanest scheme. Um, I felt like I, I was making some good headway. I'm actually curious if if taking was winning. Let's see. Engine says it's better. Yeah, it should be winning. So what if king d6? Yeah, I guess black doesn't have time to play king d6 and c4. I'm in time for b3. And like eventually black will have to allow king e5. And yeah, white, uh, white has a more active king. Okay. Here we go. Uh, back to tournament. Wow, almost two years already. Hey, happy two years. QGE3, mate. Thank you, Lakewood. Okay, that, that game was very positional. So I think in this game, I'll try and play a little bit more tactically. Um, never played this opponent before. So usually with newer opponents, I'll at least attempt to staff or gambit. Johnny D says we want a Stafford. Um, okay, not getting a Stafford. Thank you, the Woodswalker, for the raid. But we do have um, uh, four knights with bishop c4. So this is a classic center fork trick. I learned this when I was like eight years old. Like One of the first things I learned from my chess coach. The point is, if knight takes, I have d5. Win back the piece. In most cases, it's a fancy way of trading. But um, also in most cases, black gets some slight advantage because uh, I'm removing the center pawn, keeping both my own center pawns. Bishop f7 is a move here, but um, I'll still take over the center and the king will find refuge. I remember when I was, I think I was like nine years old, I had an argument with my chess coach thinking that uh, like bishop f7 has to be good for white because take away casting rights and uh, the king looks very open. But there, there's a case in chess where something might look weak, but if it can't be attacked, then it's not actually weak. And it took me a while to fully learn that, that concept. So opponents taking their time. I mean, there, there's a handful of playable moves here. I mean, knight e4 is probably the most common. There's bishop f7. Uh, Castling is interesting. I played a Grandmaster of Wonder Liang once in like some online blitz game. He played bishop d5. And after takes, takes, it's like a reverse Stafford. But uh, yeah, we'll see what white chooses. Taylor Reno says, Eric, I just watched your YouTube video of your first stream and felt sad that no one was watching. Yes, yeah, I mean, that's, I think, common for a first stream on Twitch. 
but a lot of people ended up watching the YouTube video. Also, knight d5. Wow, I don't think I've encountered this move. It's like, um, reminds me of a Belgrade Gambit. I mean, I think I can just safely develop like d6. Get the pawn chain, prepare bishop g4. Not going to take too much time here. And this looks pretty solid for black. I mean, there is rookie one. Rookie one out of six. Okay, c3. Which is bishop b7, allowing the trade. Oh, thank you, Johnny D. Happy six months. Yeah, so basically I, I got away with winning a pawn. Took on e4, moved back, and it doesn't seem like white's getting that much compensation. And I already have some uh, like d5 and maybe pawn e4 coming. Now pawn e4 doesn't quite win a piece. White has g4, white can also take. I think I'm better off just castling and keeping the center intact, seeing what white does. Wait, John Double just got the notification. That's strange. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what's like what's with Twitch and sending out notifications, but I guess sometimes they're slow. Sometimes it's a matter of like your phone settings, if it's like set to do not disturb. There is a way, if you join my Discord channel, you can get notifications from Discord rather than from Twitch, and that should be a little bit quicker. Okay, so white has g5 here, which uh, g5 would have removed the knight and attempted to win the pawn, but maybe it would be overextending. Woo. Woo. All right, let's play d4. Pawn was a target. Might as well might as well use it as a weapon. Hitting the knight. Also, maybe trying to open the d file. So, eventually win the d pawn. Okay, I'll take back. Now, what to do? Yeah, I think this position calls for some patience. Considering taking, I think I'll just play like normal improving moves like queen d7, get the rooks in, giving white the option of playing c4. But that would lock the bishop. Oh, Discord was slower. Oh, no. I'm not sure uh, what the solution could be. There's, I think there's a handful of people that just have my Twitch channel open at all times. Like if you're watching on desktop, just have it in a, a tab, and then if I go live, you'll hear my voice. Ah, uh, and there's a setting for smart notifications on Twitch. Interesting. Yeah, sometimes it's a matter of tinkering with the settings. Okay, so we do see c4. Um, one thing that comes to mind is e4 takes and then knight e5. Hmm. It resembles some Benoni structure. 
which maybe all I'll do because usually in Benoni, a knight likes to be on c5. So queen d6 is preparing knight d7, knight c5, and maybe later like f5. Thank you, AO IRL. Wow, look at this move. So white's threatening to take. Take and then c5, discover the attack. Uses so many tactics, like uses the fork, the discovered attack, kind of like a pin too. But I think I can continue with the plan. Because now if takes, I take. and I'm also hitting the knight. Very sneaky threat though. Watching Grunge leg drop New Jack through a press table. Unfortunately, I don't get that reference. That sounds interesting, though. <laughs> Watching Grunge leg drop New Jack. All just that all sounds like a combination of random words. <laughs> Okay, nice time advantage of two minutes. Going for... Ooh. I don't think that works, though. Maybe this? Up two pawns now. And the knight is still attacked, and the bishop's attacked. And, I mean, white has what seems like various ways of trying to pressure my king side, but like, everything's covered. And now I can start simplifying. I think I'll play a6. Very slow move, but I just want to move the knight and not have to worry about my a pawn. Okay, discover the attack. Not winning the queen because there's these moves, but I think I'm, I'm forcing a queen trade. And maybe winning a pawn. Or maybe losing back a pawn. Queen d5. C7 hangs. D3 is also hanging, but G5 is a target, so white's over defending. Now I can play this move. There's a nice shish kebab along the diagonal. And this move basically prevents white from winning C7 or D3. As the queen's tied down to defending the bishop, if it takes, I take the queen, pinning the queen to the king. I just want to trade. I want to keep things simple. We see knight of three. Let's take queen d6. So up three pawns. I think I'll, I'll probably lose this d pawn. I mean, knight b4, knight e5. But there's cases, actually. So after knight e5, I play rook e8, takes, 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 and then rook e2. And then it looks like I, I win back a pawn, so I'll still be up three pawns in that line. There's knight c4. But then everything's defended. I'll move the rook. Um, probably rook e6. A nice thing is this knight is very stable. Even though it's not defended, like it can't really be removed. It can easily be defended too. Okay. 
I have b5 as well, but I think I'll start with this. And maybe this. Gradual improvements. Other rook wants to join the party in white's territory. Oh, Epic Janjo says, Eric, you are on the big screen TV. Oh, shout out to your your living room. Maybe your bedroom or kitchen. Is it a 4K TV? Sorry, I'm not streaming in 4K. But as far as I know, Twitch doesn't support 4K. Maybe in like 10... 10 years? I'll make a prediction. In 10 years from now, Twitch will have 4K streaming enabled. And then in 20 years, there will be 8K streaming. Is it true that you once farted so loud during a tournament that the TD deducted five minutes from your clock? No, but I do have a story about having hiccups. And it was pretty... It was probably even more embarrassing than that sort of scenario. Because it wasn't just a singular hiccup. It was like hiccups... It was hiccups spanning like over the course of an hour during a slow tournament game. It was probably one of the worst chess experiences of my life. I, like, I couldn't stop it. And okay, like the TDs weren't going to penalize me for something I couldn't control. I think I was like maybe 10 years old at the time. I was playing in an open tournament with adults and they were, I think a lot of them were a little bit annoyed with me, but I mean, what to do? It was, I was really thankful my opponent was wearing earplugs. So I'm not sure if my opponent even knew that I had hiccups. Because I think they were good earplugs. Okay. That was pleasant. Just realizing it's been... It's been over a decade since I've had hiccups. At least consistent hiccups. Thank you, Zahid. Thank you, hey TJ. Stafford greater than kitty cats. Oh yeah, haha. <laughs> nice. Yeah, after this tournament, I don't know. Should I stream some mins content with people like that? Or should I do like something else? Maybe some other like variant duck chess. Could explore pie chess variants. Could play bug house. Blindfold Simul. I found my blindfold yesterday and now, now I forgot where I put it. I was like cleaning out some drawer. I'll probably do a poll eventually. No berserking, but E4. It'd be cool if I could like play Bug House and have Mittens as my partner. And be uh, slightly adorable. Okay, we have um, a very common position. Debating, I mean, Ponziani I've played so many times. Let me play a, an opening that I used to play a lot in childhood. Um, now, moving my opponent plays bishop c5, which we do see. I'm going to play the Muller attack, which happens after this and then d4. And there's a cool gambit line that I learned when I was about nine years old. Unfortunately, okay, opponent's not going into it. I mean, d6 is, I think, already a, a slightly dubious move. So, not too disappointed. 
essentially winning, uh, not winning material, but grabbing space in the center and winning time, I guess. Yeah, the opening I wanted to play, I'll hopefully get in a, a future game. Um, it's a variation of the Italian. Maybe H3. I think H3 is actually very useful. Because it takes away the most active developing square for the bishop. I just sent you a pic of my dog watching you stream. Oh, that's cute. He wants to know how to beat Mittens too. Where do you send it? I can take a look. Maybe I've, I could even show it on stream if I can find the picture. Uh, let's play this. Thank you, Jovius. I'm checking my spam folder in my email. Um, yeah, no recent emails. Okay, let's castle. What rating did you have when you were 10? Um, 10, so I was in fourth grade. Fourth grade, I was like 1600. Actually, 1600 was like the first plateau of my chess career. I was referring to a US chess rating. Or back in the day, USCF. And I was stuck at 1600 for about a year. And then in like a couple of tournaments, I had really good results and jumped to 1800. Mm, let's play this move. I'm gradually improving. Oh, on Instagram. Yeah, I'm really not that active on Instagram. Although, I, I made a discovery today on Instagram. I'll, I'll explain momentarily. Please play the polish. It is such a fun opening. It's like the London, but better. Oh. You might have to elaborate. The Polish. Yeah, I usually only play the the Polish when, when I get bribed to do so. So maybe uh, this is a sign to play the Polish. I was considering of, uh, like in this game, I was considering the delayed Polish, also known as the Evans Gambit. The Polish is usually B4 on move one. Oh, I can't load the picture on Instagram desktop, unfortunately. What to do? Okay, maybe this move. And now this move. Yeah, I've created the battery. So and the goal is to eventually checkmate. Welcome to chess. I think I'll start with knight d5. Hitting the pawn. Looking to maneuver to f4. I mean, this is really the only piece that's defending the king side for black. So if I can get rid of the knight and then play e5, I think that would be nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, unfortunately, no dog pick because I, I couldn't load it. What to do? But I do appreciate people who like who watch the stream on their TV and then send me pictures of their pets watching the stream on the TV. There are a handful of like cats watching me and they would chase the cursor. If there's any cats watching, try and catch the cursor. Meow, meow. Maybe Mins is watching. Plotting revenge. That's looking pretty good move that I just missed. I played this move. Allowing takes and then this and then back and then takes and takes, takes. That looks really good. Yeah, unleashing the beast of the battery. Very simple threat of taking the knight. And the knight's pinned to the h7 square. Now black would really like to just put the knight on f8 to defend h7, but not quite happening. Let's take the knight. Okay, I see people in chat saying, we want dog pick. At least one person says that. Maybe I'll try harder to find the dog pick. <laughs> but first things first, I have to checkmate the king. Getting closer. So knight takes, takes, and the king is smack in the center. Dog pick, dog pick, dog pick. Do. I was just beginning to calculate the funny mate. Okay, let me guess. Um, I still don't see the force mate, but I'm guessing like maiden five, according to Sockfish. Let's see. Maybe it's like, oh, maiden five. Oh, wow. <laughs> so what is a maiden five? It just seems like there's so many possibilities. I assume bishop d5 first. Queen g7 first. Rook f, what if king d6? Oh, wow, look at this idea. Bishop f4, losing the bishop, and then checkmate. That's nice. So rook f6, bishop b6. King d5, bishop f7. Oh, that's so nice. Rook takes f7, rook cd1, checkmate. Or there's other lines too, like queen d4, checkmate. Or this line, like takes... Takes and then queen d4, man. Okay. All right, let me find this dog picture. I could just generate... I've been generating um, AI. Been using some, like, thumbnail. Hello... I still can't find it. Instagram like filters things. Let me just generate a picture of a, a cute puppy, a cute puppy playing chess. And let me see what this comes up with. Yeah, some people have like realized, uh, at least those who, who follow the YouTube content and see the thumbnails, um, the recent, let me just share the recent one. I've been generating a lot of like funny cat pictures. And like for one of them, it was... Can I just drag this into a tab? Yeah, this was generated based on the prompt Evil Cheskin. I made this. And I eventually used like an image similar to this one. Let me see what it made for cute puppy playing chess. 
Also, okay, let me uh let me try and focus on the game too. I use an app called Midjourney. Oh, this is cool. It does such a good job. Like the just the detail. And with these images, like I could uh choose to upscale them and make them higher resolution. Okay, so we have a King's Indian attack. Let's play, I think I'd like to leave the tension, just bishop e2, or bishop e7. It feels like I'm white. Uh, if I take the C4 is interesting. I'll take on E4. Anticipating pawn takes. We might see knight takes. The nice thing now is I have the D4 square. White has a D5 square, but a knight can't easily move to D5. I'm actually considering this. This is actually kind of wild, but also kind of logical. Queen d3. So if this knight moves, then I win one of the pawns. I think it's still playable for white. But uh, I think it's already a bit easier for black. Because this knight isn't happy being blocked by its own pawns. Same case with the bishop. Okay. Bishop B2 coming. Let's start with this. I like this uh, this comment um, from Greta Disciples. Cute puppy versus mins. I wonder if I type in... Um, let me generate this. Imagine... Cute puppy versus adorable kitten in chess. Let's see what it generates. Question from Lemp Garia. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, asking which countries will you visit this year? I haven't like finalized all my travel plans this year, but uh, I think the the ones earlier in the year are Norway and Iceland, and then after that, I'm not entirely sure, but hoping to at least visit a few countries I've never been been to before. I've never been to Norway before, so looking forward to it. There's a pretty strong tournament there in a few months. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Apologies if I'm not like fully focused on this game, but the position is already like really good. Knight C2 is coming, and I want to share this uh, this new AI generated work. Uh, puppy versus kin in chess. I like the first one. I think the second one is just kind of a, a split screen. Oh, no, white's queen. It's a funny queen trap. Like, the queen's just in its own territory, but I'm, I'm controlling all these squares just with the minor pieces. Oh, no butchering done. Your name is randomly generated. Oh, wow. Was it AI generated? Mittens, mittens. 
the most evil of all kittens. Oh yeah. She'll suck out your soul and plant your head on a Wait, pole. what? But she's so darn cute she shan't be smitten. That was very poetic. Thanks for the poem. Welcome back, your boy Logie Bear. Okay. I think I can just leave the queen attacked. I'd rather hold on to the bishop first. And yeah, generally when the queen is trapped, you want to look for ways to counterattack the pawn's queen or counterattack anything. But um, yeah, there's no, no move to actually attack my queen here. Yeah, the prompt um the prompt was just cute puppy versus adorable kin in chess. I, I went ahead and upscaled this first image. So this this is like the full resolution of of what it made. <laughs> That's pretty uh and it's so impressive. Like I'm still like in awe every time it generates an image. Why are they so interested in the bishop? I think it's a pawn. Or maybe they're they're like trying to figure out whether it's a bishop or a pawn. Okay. Hmm. So if I take the bishop, takes a knight. If I take the knight, takes my knight. How does it make you all feel to get your butts kicked by a kitten? Um, it was very humbling. A little bit adorable. And also a little bit frightening. It was a weird mix of feelings. Welcome back, Z Nation. Okay, I'm trying to put my foot on the gas pedal here. I want to play rook f6 and then take the pawn or just take the free rook. Okay. Yeah, for a moment, I, I thought this game might be like hard to get an advantage. Like if I play d4, then things really close down. I think in this position, um, queen b3 was probably the way to go. Just offer the trade, and my white should be doing okay. And sometimes here, the the better approach is like rookie one and c three, because c four is a, a small positional concession. So back to tournament, top twenty, forty one minutes left. Still got some tea. I'm drinking genmaicha. We still have the T command. A shout out to Uproot T's. Okay, playing chess noob. I still want the Stafford. I, I guess I'll go for the Stafford and let's see what happens here. Can you berserk and rapid? Yeah, generally, if you're playing an arena tournament, you can berserk, uh, regardless of the time control. Okay, so we have a King's Gambit, Falkbeer Counter Gambit. It's one of my favorite counter gambits. And this is a line, like this is actually a main line. I think it's called the Basia variation. But pushing the pawn, this is a line I learned a long time ago. And the point is to try and restrict white's development. I think queen digs d5 is a move. Because now with knight c3, I develop and pin the knight. And uh, also one back the pawn. I still have to remember to play the Polish. 
Um, yeah, here I think I have to... It's not so simple. That's interesting, though. So let's take and then bishop g4, hitting the queen. I just want to complete development as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, what of this move? Maybe this move? Moving the serving bishop f5, it allows g4, and it looks like the bishop gets trapped, but there's a line, bishop f5, g4, and then I take, hitting the rook. Oh, except that there's a pin. Wait, so what if what if bishop f5, g4, castling? And then takes, and then probably doesn't work. Yeah, let's just go for bishop e6. This is a safer option. Restricting the pin as well. So I have all my minor pieces developed, ready to castle. Still some pawn tension. White has yet to develop anything on the king side. But has castled. But in doing so, I mean, if I take on a2, takes on e4, it's not so simple. I could take here first, but then rook takes an f5 coming. Can't get too excited just yet. I'm actually really curious of when White Castle, did White see that a2 is going to be undefended? This is interesting. Like, take, take. Queen a1, king d2. I don't think it leads to much for black. And here, here, maybe castling. If e5, e5 ever, I have knight e5. If f5, bishop c4. This is actually kind of cool. I'm going to take on a2. And after it takes, I can castle, and my queen on e2 defends a pawn on e7. So I'm, I'm not hanging the pawn the same way, same way that white did. And the goal is actually to take away the d2 square somehow. Like a threat might be knight c5, and that would threaten maiden one. So white has to be really careful here. We might see bishop d3. But then maybe I'll go for knight b6, idea knight c4. Or idea queen a1, king d2, knight c4 with a pork, a pin and fork. Or I can play knight c4 first, attacking the queen and covering d2. So I'm threatening mate in one. Bishop takes c4 doesn't work. And yeah, this is mate. At bishop c4, the rook is still covering d2. So that ended really quickly. Um, yeah, white kind of castled into danger and then maybe wasn't aware of the, the real danger. I think b3 would maybe even be completely fine for white. Like b3 defends a1, and I don't know if black has a clear follow-up. Actually curious if white is maybe even better. Okay, a little bit worse, but b3 is the way to go. Okay. Top 10. I'm really not trying to win the tournament, but if I have quick wins and keep climbing, maybe I'll, I'll make a push. Okay, now 11th place. Yeah, this is probably the real Ding Loren. When was Ding born? Is Ding... No, Ding's not 40 years old. Oh, probably not Ding. Uh, no berserking. Oh, okay. 
Muscle memory almost took over, but I'm playing a Polish. Ato the Taui donated $5 earlier, asking for a Polish opening, saying how great it is, saying that it's even better than the London, which I guess we'll find out about very shortly. I'll play E3. And we're getting, we're getting an interesting battle here. I like the fact that I'm like discouraging C5. I'm gonna play A3. <clears throat> I don't mind this. Debating between D4, D3, even C4. Kind of like D3. Although. Okay, black wants to play c5. I'm taking some time here because this is new territory for me. I'm glad you're happy after the tally. Um, There's a move here that actually looks kind of interesting. And I feel like it's probably one of the more flexible moves. Like, weirdly enough, is 95. Of violating some opening principles because I'm moving the same piece twice before developing the other pieces. But um, I think in most cases the knight goes there anyway. And now let's play play f4. How about? But I'm still not sure if I want to play like this or this or even bishop d3. Maybe queen f3. Aligning with the bishop. Essentially pinning the pawn to the bishop, which is not defended. There's ideas later of queen g3, even queen h3. Opponent defending the rook. I like the queen on h3. It's kind of sitting on the sidelines, but it's eyeing things on the king side. And especially because black is definitely never casting queen side. There's a chance black will castle king side and then will have a raging attack, even if the king stays in the center. Um, there will hopefully be a lot of attacking possibilities. Opponent left the game. They have one minute to return. Oh no, my opponent. Okay, I'm going to generate a new AI prompt. Looks like my opponent is back. Polish monkey playing chess. Because this is a Polish opening, but it's also called the orangutan. Bishop d6. I'm conflicted. Bishop wants to go here, but the pawn... I think the pawn here makes more sense. Because it restricts Black's main counterplay, which is 94. And it prepares this knight maneuver. Orangutans are apes and not monkeys. Ooh. Okay, how do we spell orangutan? I'm generating a bunch of AI images. It takes uh, some time to process, but I'll share them when they're ready. Okay, pawn c5. It's actually a slightly annoying move, because if I take... I'm subjecting my bishop to some problems. If I don't take, then... And black might be winning a pawn. That's a good move. I think I'll just play knight d2. I'm going to sack a pawn. I'm feeling a little bit adventurous here.
I'll just go for this. Recovering from COVID. Oh. Thanks for the content. Hope you feel better. Yeah, I hope I can help pass the time. Speedy recovery wishes to Kavita. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, originally I, I was thinking I'll just take back, but I'm considering like Bishop E2 takes, even like Rook takes is a funny line, but let's go with my first impression. And now I should probably play Rook D1. Rook D1, there's Rook C8. I think I'll just play Bishop E2 here. It's a very risky play, but maybe it'll pay off. Wow. Okay, this is uh, the Polish orangutan playing chess. I don't know what the chess pieces are in this image. <laughs> What's the best one? Also this image. Sometimes the AI will get confused. Kind of like the, the fourth one the best. This reminds me of childhood where we used to like stack the rooks and make a giant tower. Queen C7. Yeah, I have to defend the Z-Pawn. And yeah, Knight is still solid. Black can't... I mean, Black could take... Bishop takes, there's Bishop D6. If I get the chance... Okay, now... Uh, I want a castle, but there's three attackers against a Knight, only two defenders. So it's time for Knight F3. Reinforcing. If the Bishop goes back, I play King F2. And then I'll do some artificial castling. Yeah, the service I'm using for uh, these AI images, it's called Mid Journey. Um, it kind of works as a Discord bot. Like you just, you open a message with it in Discord and it'll, um, like you, you feed the prompts and it'll generate artwork based on your prompts. And like there's a free version, but I'm using like paid version, which allows for more prompts every month. Oh, I see the message from Dan Passant. Says I'm playing my first tournament in 12 years this weekend. Oh, wow. Good luck. That's, uh, that's a long break, but... Uh, it can be nice to come back to tournament chess with a fresh perspective. I think the longest break I've taken from tournament chess over the course of my career was like maybe a year and a half, like during the course of 2020. Okay. So king f2, I should have considered c3. Maybe make it easier to castle. Um, yeah, I think I'll start with rook b1. Maybe the other rook will come to c1. Black swing, a good game though. And still very solid, but uh, it's still very sharp, too. <laughs> it's about to get sharper. Finally launching some pawns for him on the king side. And yeah, if the black king stays in the center, then... It should still be attackable. 
I mean, the threat is already G5, and if the knight moves back to G8, there's ideas of G6. It's actually a really cool line. G6, F6, Queen, H7. I lose a queen, but then I promote it like right away. There's a chance we'll see something like this play out. Hmm. choice between knight takes and pawn takes. I think pawn takes. Don't mind the double pawns. And I have this move. It's getting really spicy. Now the problem, <clears throat> I mean, what I want to do is takes, 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 rook g8 and then takes on h7. But the problem is queen h4 check. <clears throat> I think black is doing okay here. <coughs> I'm going to play this. Idea, okay, I'm attacking my twice with the pawns. After knight goes back, I'll play d4 and bishop d3. Down a pawn, but feels like one of these French-type gambits. It reminds me a lot of like a wing gambit in the French, where, okay, black has extra pawn on the queen side, the king side and the center is very solid. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have f5 anymore. But there's still potential to break through. Get some h4 idea. Although h4 will trap in my own queen. Let's be careful. Let me start with this move. Still some ideas of h5. My king should be elsewhere. I really got to watch my time. Pwn's doing a good job of keeping up the pace. Oh, there's a really cool idea. Which... I don't think it works at all. I was thinking there's a pin, but... Oh, it could maybe work, though? Mm. H3 first, or C4 first. Also C3. F5. Let me try this. So bishop a6 takes, takes, f5. Opponent just pushes. Okay, so let's play queen h4. Yeah, there's um, whichever way black takes, if black takes, then there's avenues to the black king. If black doesn't take, then I'll have a choice between f6 or taking. For the time being, I'm, I'll have rook a1 if necessary. Very sharp position, though. Okay, it's maybe rook a1 to start with. Really? Does B3 really work? I have F6. There's no move here. I have King G1. I think I should play this first. It was getting risky, though. I 
and you had queen e1. It's passive. At least the king is on the square where maybe I can exploit it. A problem is the king side's completely closed down. Yeah, threatening this maybe. Objectively, I'm probably worse, but I mean, practically it's still very interesting. Okay, I have a feeling Bach just didn't see this idea. And takes, takes is coming. Yeah, Black just missed the queen was hanging. Okay. <laughs> I was definitely worse uh, at some point there, but I got a nice gift from the opponent. Finally made a live stream. Oh, nice job. Welcome to Vladimir Freddy. Happy one year. Opponent going for counterplay. Uh, that's almost mate. Gwynny Seven's coming. Played in Pretty a tourney best. today. Thanks for the help. Okay. Uh, back to tournament. I don't think I have chances to win the tournament, but um... okay, hovering around top ten. A leader has thirty points. Maybe there are chances. Like, should I? Should I try and berserk the next, however many games? And there should be time for at least two more games. Yeah, that was a very hard fought game. Black uh Black handled the opening very fine. C5 was a very good move. My my pawn sacrifice didn't really pay off. Um I don't want to berserk this opponent. But let's play let's play a bit more ambitiously. I'll play Sicilian. Uh A6. Played this opponent a few times before. Let's go him rose and let's go him rose and let's go him rose and duck him rose and duck him rose and duck. Okay, playing very ambitiously here. Let's go. Thank you, single duck. Or singe duck. So white's allowed the H pawn <coughs> to H4, which is generally okay. Um like there's only so much I can do on the king side. And this might already be like some theoretical position, which I clearly don't know any theory behind. Uh, queen c7 is sometimes met with bishop f4. And maybe I just take. There's also bishop c5. And bishop c5 looks interesting. I have some vague memory of a Vichy Anon game where he just put the bishop on a7 and it chilled on the diagonal. And the bishop combines well with a uh, h pawn thrust. But it's very double edged. Like this could backfire. There's cases where white like makes very strong positional gains in the center, especially with the structure. D6 is kind of weak. A diagonal could be annoying. My bishop's out of play. So there's pros and cons. There's a few kind of moves for white. Like there's taking this, this. Bishop a7. Well, 
What's your best chess tip for newcomers? From what a big fan. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of like different pieces of advice I can give to newcomers. A big part of improving at anything, not just chess, is just like enjoying the process and finding ways to keep things fun. Um, generally, I mean, it's a healthier approach not to get too attached, like reading or like number of games you win, but just kind of enjoy the process. Try and learn something from every game, like especially the losses. Early on, you'll make a lot of mistakes. Um, doing a lot of puzzles when you're newer to the game can really help too. Like build pattern recognition, to help you minimize blunders. Takes, takes. I don't think I want to relieve the tension just yet. I'm debating what to do with this knight. I was considering this move, but then this. If I play this, there's e5. I'm considering like this move. I think 97. Yeah, like, I feel like there were too many issues with putting the knight here, exposing myself to a lot of danger. With the knight on the e7, also blocks the file a bit. Less scariness on the e-file. And there's cases where the knight can kind of come in and work together with other knights. Do I ever schedule times for sub challenge games? Yeah, I know it's been a while since the last uh, like sub challenge stream. I'd say most often it's like on Sundays or sometimes Mondays, but um, yeah, these days it's been difficult to have like a a set schedule. As mentioning earlier, my my streams sometimes depend on when I have the most energy, which recently has been like later in the day. The evening's my time. I'm wondering if I can play f6 here. f6 takes and then g5. And there's also takes, takes, queen c7. Let's go for that. Yeah, this might actually be the last game that counts for the tournament. So there's 10 minutes left, and this game might not even count for the tournament. <laughs> uh, did my opponent just miss a threat? Or am I missing something? Queen takes g3... I think it was just a blind spot from white. Let's see. I mean, I'm, I'm threatening maiden one after queen g3. <laughs> There's a sniper bishop. Even for a strong player, I guess it can be easy to overlook the pin. Rookie one. Now I win this bishop. Okay, white's going full ham. I want to get away with taking, but that's probably the one thing I shouldn't do in this position. Maybe this move. Maybe taking with knight, actually. And then just move back. Yeah, simplify a bit. I mean, white's trying to apply pressure at the major pieces, but uh, things are covered. This g2 bishop can be a target, maybe. 
B5, Bishop B7. This is like the one problem piece in these um, like Taimanov, Taimanov Khan structures, or just like French structures. But there's cases where the bishop fiancados and it turns into one of the better pieces. Okay, not a five. Hmm. I think nine of five looks nice. Like the pawns are playing the the kind of the key defensive role here. I'm wondering if there is some like crazy ideas like knight g3, rook h1. It seems close. I mean, I'll start with taking. I'm still looking at knight g3, queen f3, rook h1 takes knight e2, double check. Oh, maybe I could have gone for that. Oh, no, king f1. And queen g1's not mate. Wow. Rook d5. So I can't take the rook. My knight's pinned. B5 is very tempting here. Idea bishop B7. I don't see anything wrong with it. It looks weakening, like intuition. Oh, maybe it was weakening. I just give back the piece. Wait a minute. Oh, look at this. I can take. And after it takes, wait, does it work? Queen h3? Maybe it doesn't work. Wait, this isn't so simple. I got tricked. I thought it was going to be easy. It was actually not that simple. Okay, let's start with queen g5. And there's also d5, well, d5 is interesting too. There's also taking. Wait, d5, d5, bishop c6, king d8. Take this. I like this because it cuts off the bishop. E6 is not weak because, oh my gosh, I'm missing things. <laughs> I forgot that was pinned. But I have takes? Wait a minute. I have to slow down a little bit. Takes, takes. I was getting crazy. Or maybe I have to speed up. If queen takes its maiden one, bishop takes its force mate. If knight moves, I take here. I think it's just winning. I made so many oversights there. I miss rook f5, miss bishop d5, but... I mean, I saw, like, these arrows. And I guess it's enough for, for missing all the, the moves that white played. I mean, there's so many threats here. So there is a line bishop takes. And if I'm too quick to check, there's a discovered counter check. But if bishop takes, takes, takes. Rook takes, king d7. Rook g6, I take, take, here. Go, takes, Eric, takes. I hope only the best for you in 2023. What's happening? Oh, thank you, Jay Saki. It's actually an insane line. So takes, 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 takes. 
here, here. If I take here, here. Oh, and then after takes, I have king b6. It's still not that simple, though. I don't want to mess this up, but I have to take the bishop. Like, there's really not too many other options. Can I still? I can't still legally castle. Or can I? If I take on f two, wait, taking on f two might be playable. Oh wow! Look at this move. Take. I'm, I've been missing so much, I'm not confident, but takes, takes rook h1, takes, takes, that's gotta work. <laughs> it got so wild so quickly. Everything's just hanging. Queen, bishop are hanging, bishop's hanging. My queen is, yeah, I already said that. The knight's hanging, uh, rook's hanging, king's attacked. My king's also in danger. This rook's just chilling. But it wants to go to a square that becomes hanging. And yeah, it should be winning for black. Because the main line is takes, rook h1, takes, takes, and then the rook is hit. So discovery checks don't work. Yeah, what a crazy line. I didn't check with the queen because bishop g4 is a counter check. I mean, maybe I'm sure I missed things earlier, though. We'll see what happens here. I think my opponent is realizing their doom. And there is king g2. King g2, bishop g bishop b7. I think I just assumed in this line I would take the bishop, but and that is kind of crazy. Play something like I, I have rook h2? Rook h2 here. It doesn't work though, because king h1 and this is met with this. Oh, that's frustrating. Wow. Now, this is not over. Check. I don't have much time either. Bishop b7. I think I just have to take. That was not what I wanted. Okay, at least there's this line. Okay, this is why you should study your end games. Let's see if my opponent knows how to hold this. Check. It's a theoretical draw, but there's cases where it can be tricky. I'll gradually work up with my king. No! Oh no. I just I just dropped the rook. 
Oh no. And the tournament's over. Oh, that's such a sad ending. Oh. That was irresponsible. Good game. What a game, though. And I was trying to, like, get some more time on the clock and then gradually play G6. What to do? There goes some reading. Uh, if we check... I actually just want to check the... Uh... And this position is winning for black. D5 was apparently not good. Because I missed bishop takes d5. And then this is this is already just equal. And bishop f2 keeps the quality. King g2, yeah, only move. And actually on a practical level, like that's disappointing <laughs> being up a pawn there. Uh, what to do? Especially being up a piece earlier. streams are great after a long day. Oh, thank you, Rookie. Happy Luke. New Year. Looking forward to all you'll do in 2023. I appreciate that.